Hi everyone, and welcome to lecture 105, Sensitivity Analysis. We are almost at the end of this section, but we will cover an important lecture now and run a sensitivity over the key assumptions in our DCF analysis. In the overview to DCF analysis lecture, we mentioned that our key assumptions play a very important role in determining the value of a company. I'm not talking about the assumptions we made in financial modeling section, but the assumptions we made in DCF analysis, namely the growth rate, the exit multiple, and the weighted average cost of capital. All of these inputs can change the valuation of a company dramatically. That is why it is always good to include a sensitivity for all of these assumptions at the end of a DCF analysis so that we can see the impact of changes in these key assumptions on our valuation. All right, um, now we, before we start, um, please go ahead and download the Excel files attached to this lecture. You'll find one sold and one unsold versions. Um, you can work either of them. Um, this will be actually a combination of sold and unsold. We, we are now looking over the, the sold version. However, um, we, I will show you how to create the data tables. So I'm going to delete them now. So it will be partially unsold. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let's start um, first by deciding on our inputs for the sensitivity analysis. As you can see here, we have three different inputs. Uh, we have the discount rate variance, which is for the VAC. So we want to see, um, in this case, five different weighted average cost of capital uh, figures. And we know this was our main figure. I'm going to um, bolt this one, this 5.82. We just want to see the, the difference if the WAC moves by, in this case, 0.5%. You can change it, but I think for this range of WAC, 0.5% is a good number. And here, down below, there is the terminal value multiple variance, uh, which is 1. This is for the EBITDA multiple, the exit EBITDA multiple. It says uh, 1 times. As you can see here, we are running two different uh, sensitivity analysis for the implied share price, not the equity value, the share price. Um, and one uh, sensitivity for perpetuated growth method and one sensitivity for the exit multiple method. And for the exit EBITDA multiple, we want a vari variance of one times. And this is, as you know, 12 was our um, core assumption. All right. Um, and, the, and lastly, we have the growth variance for the perpetuated growth model. And our assumptions, the core assumption was 2% growth for the perpetuated period. And we want to um, see 0.25% change in the change implications here, as you can see. So we need to um, actually type these numbers in as inputs because of the calculation purposes. And if you are ready now, I'm going to delete these tables here and here, and I will show you guys how to, and I'm gonna save it, how to show you to, how to calculate sensitivity tables, create sensitivity tables. All right, um, the first things first, we need um, these links here because we are going to use this area to create our table. And I just want to keep everything nice and clean. That is why I just gave them a different color here, as you can see, nothing fancy, just a light color. So they wouldn't, dis they, they, they wouldn't, they can't disturb us while we do our calculation. So the first thing you need to do is just link the, um, implied share price, the core output, uh, the output of our core assumptions here at the top left corner of the sensitivity table. Link it in the same way you can link this exit multiple method implied share price from here. 
the result of our core assumptions that we are going to test now. We link them at the top left corner of our sensitivity tables. In here, as you can see, on the left hand side for both tables, we have the weighted average cost of capital with 50.5% variance. So as you can see here, um, oops, this one is formatted, its format went wrong, all right. And here um, on the perpetuity growth method uh, sensitivity table, we have the variance of um, 0 0.2, 0.5%. This is actually, that is the discount variance. So we need to use this one. There is a slight, there is an error here. We notice together, let's fix it. All right, and I'm gonna just increase the digit Y1. Yep, as you can see, we have the variance of 2.5%. 0.25%. And here for the exit multiple method, we have the variance of one times EBITDA multiple, which we um, simply add or subtract from our core assumption here. All right, now everything looks ready. Um, now we can create our tables. All right, just uh, we need to select the, from the, the top left corner where we link the implied share price, our output, and we need to um, um, get this all area selected, the table. And then we are going to the data section at this upper ribbon, and we are going to go to the what if analysis and click on the data table. Here, it will ask for a row input cell, which is the, um, if you go to up, this is asking for the row input which is down, down, down here, the long-term growth rate for the perpetuity method. And for the column input, it's the weighted average cost of capital here. So let's go all the way down. For the row, we are running the sensitivity on the growth rate, the perpetuity growth rate, and on the column side, we are running the sensitivity on the weighted average cost of capital. So we put it here in the input cell. And when we click OK, we are going to get our sensitivity table on weighted average cost of capital, the sensitivity table of share price on weighted average cost of capital and perpetuity uh, growth rate. And if we save it, and then Excel will calculate them. As you can see here, uh, here we have the output of our core assumptions, 2% growth rate versus 5.82% of weighted average cost of capital results in a share price of $53.8. If we increase, I'm gonna just use this digit here. If we increase, um, let's say the growth rate by 0.25%, the share price goes up to 56, and here, as you can see, if we use a 2.5% growth and a 4.82% of weighted average cost of capital, share price goes up as much as 86.27%. So you can see the impact, the impact of the growth rate and the weighted average cost of capital on the valuation of Starbucks Corporation. All right, I'm gonna unbolt this one, and now we are going to do the same thing here. What is our row input? It's the EBITDA multiple, and we need to go all the way up to the core assumption. And we will go to here, 12 times exit EBITDA, and there is the column input, which is, again, the weighted average cost of capital, which is 5.82%. So I'm gonna go down here, the sensitivity analysis, and when I click OK, it is going to create the sensitivity table um, on the share price, implied share price of Starbucks Corporation for the um, exit multiple and rated average cost of capital. And I need to save. And here we get the both tables. As you can see, guys, here in the middle, again, the same logic applies. 
12 times exit multiple EBITDA and 5.82% of weighted average cost of capital results in a $52.87 of share price. And as you can see here, if the multiple goes down to 10 times, even with the same weighted average cost of capital, as you can see here, share price goes down to 46.5%. So it is clear that how um, the valuation changes with the sl small changes in this figures or assumptions. Well, um, yep. In addition to the key DCF assumptions, we can actually extend our sensitivity by performing a similar analysis on sales growth rates and EBITDA margins. It's just optional, but we are not going to do them in this course. So, um, all right, <laughs> we are done with sensitivity analysis. So I see you guys in the last lecture of this section, lecture 106, ups and downs of DCF analysis. I see you guys in the next lecture. Thank <music> you.